Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these updates where I talk about some of the features and fixes that I was able to get up to this week um, and in this case also for the week before. Um, so before we get into the work I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors who basically pay for my time to work on Inkscape. Um, thank you all so much for your dedication towards making Inkscape better and trusting me to be able to deliver that for you. Um, if you'd like to join them, please consider joining on Patreon uh, or you may choose to use LibrePay. Um, and yeah, we can get some pretty cool stuff done when we work together. Okay, so let's talk about the actual work. Uh, so you probably noticed that I didn't do a video last week, uh, so apologies about that. Uh, but basically what happened is, is that I'd been sort of researching how to do the color management stuff. And then on, on Friday afternoon, it suddenly just like a dam broke and I just started writing a whole bunch of code. And uh, I, I, I may have stayed up too late. And then by the weekend, I was kind of just not in a good space to be able to make a video. Um, so, so the good news is, is that I wrote a bunch of code, which is, is good. Um, but I wasn't able to tell you about it. But hopefully now I, I can actually go through everything that's happened. Um, so what this is all about is about Inkscape itself uh, allowing you to have um, color managed documents where you can target specific color pro profiles such as CMYK um, or you know other things um, and give you sort of the flexibility to be able to then export those to a color managed PDF file, for example, um, or in the future, some other options. Um, so the way in which Inkscape previously had done color management stuff is kind of obtuse and kind of um, not good. You would essentially select the pro profile in the document properties uh, and the user interface was terrible. And then you would use the, the CMS tab on the um, color picker to then choose the colors in that space, uh, which then would not be rendered into PDF uh, correctly. They would just be ignored and turned into RGB. Uh, th that profile wouldn't be used for um, uh, the, the print preview, the color proof proofing mode. That would be a completely separate preference. Um, and so the, the whole work has been sort of to try and unify that entire thing into one uh, user interface into one workflow, into one thing that's just much, much easier to teach, uh, much, much easier to understand, and hopefully will include more documentation to, to walk users through, because we don't expect everybody to be a print master. Uh, and part of Inkscape's mission is not just to delivering software, it also has to be about uh, educating uh, people on how to do graphics art themselves. Um, that's part of the freedom that you want to be able to give to users is to be able to expand their knowledge. Um, and so, okay, so the first thing is, is do you remember the last user interface change that, that, that I made? It was uh, taking the the um, top right corner that's in the, in the scroll bars and uh, essentially uh, putting in all of the extra buttons for the um, color proofing and, and, and the gamut one into that drop down. Uh, it's not drop drop down. It's it's a pop over. Um, that was okay, but uh, after a bunch of conversations, I decided that actually what would be better is if I had a a, a color managed pop over for just for color management stuff and and didn't involve any of the other rend rend rendering modes. Um, and so what I did is I took the the now uh, now unoccupied space in the bottom right hand corner of the to, of the scroll bars, which used to just toggle on and off the color proof proofing mode, a mode that most of the time didn't work in the past. I have to stress, um, and turn that into a popover just like the top uh, the top right one. Uh, the bottom right one though is just for color management stuff and so I could really go to town on, on thinking about like how this would look and how it would work um, and what I decided to do was to make it so that when you click on it it from a single glance you should be able to tell that you're in RGB mode or tell that you're in CMYK mode um, and so the first thing is is that you see the um, you'll see sRGB and you'll see a red green and blue uh, graphic those are just icons, and then if you're if you're using CMYK, you'll see uh, little droplets of of CMYK of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and and all of that is just an icon, a quick 
thing to basically say, okay, you're using this different pro pro profile, and so you can tell uh, what kind of uh, color space that the document is you're you're using. Um, there's a new concept that I've added to the SVG, which is called the the default color space. What this is all about is is about making sure that uh, if if you tell Inkscape that you have an ICC print profile for a CMYK, i.e. I'm targeting a printer, uh, Inkscape needs to know that that's the default one, that that's the one it needs to target for things like color pickers and for the uh, print one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in order to, to, to do this, what I did is I uh, refactored the document properties and the system properties. Uh, these are all contained within the same pop-up. Uh, the, the system preferences, which is now a little cog, um, will essentially what allows you to do is set a bunch of defaults. Those defaults are just like quick actions to smooth over the workflow so you don't have to continuously go into the document prop properties in order to set a pro profile. Not that that's a huge task anymore, but you know, making it easier. Um, and then the document pr properties I completely rewrote, uh, first of all, with um, help text, a new web page on the website that, that we link to, to give a sort of more co comprehensive guide. I'm uh, deeply looking into the Critter guide, which is very, very good. And I'm probably going to copy piece, pieces of that out. Um, th then we have a, uh, a simple drop down box for the default color pro pro profile. Uh, everything is hooked up with signals correctly, so there's no like weird situation where you select a thing and it doesn't do anything. Um, and then the idea is is that uh, once you've selected a color pro profile, then the color pickers will work as expected, and you'll be selecting colors in that pro profile space. Um, the display one will work in that color space. It's just that one drop drop down that needs to be set. Obviously, documents can still exist with non-default profiles, but I haven't worked out what the workflow for that will look like. Um, whether that's related to spot colors, I'm not entirely sure if that's necessary. Uh, whether that's for multiple pro prof profiles because you have mixing, but I'd really hope to avoid mixing if possible, because there's a lot of complexities with re rendering that happens when you have multiple pro profiles. And what, S what Inkscape's color management stuff is going to look like primarily is turning everything into sRGB in order for, for it to display, but then outputting the CMYK values directly when you actually go to export the PDF. Um, it's a little bit of a more of a, a complicated dance just because of the rendering in infrastructure that we have is limited. Um, so let's get back to the pop-up. You'll notice that I had some um, buttons for the CMYK inks. Those are a space for the for, for the future when we get more comfortable with the color management stuff. I want those to do color separation so you can click on the cyan and basically the display will change to just showing you the cyan ink. Um, and hopefully that will provide some useful uh, fun functionality to be able to see color separation. I also want output for color separation in the future as well. And I have some good ideas about how to do that with our rendering model that Need some experimentation, but I think I'll be able to do it. It's just that um, all of that it has to be preparatory because um, I think that's more advanced fun functionality, and the and the um, minimum viable uh, functionality that we have here needs to be more straightforward. I think, but we'll see. We'll see what the user feedback is like. Um, and the next piece is to go into the color pickers themselves. There's a, there's a discussion about which of these tabs should be even visible. Uh, there's some developers that think that the only the CMYK tab should be visible if you're in CMYK mode. This is a bit of a stretch. Designers don't like this. I, it's not in my instinct, personally, to hide all of the other tabs if you're in CMYK mode. I definitely understand why, though. Um, my preference is just to warn that like colors are being converted and they're not truthful, um, except if you're in the CMYK tab. Uh, and the same thing for the RGB, right? Like if, if currently you go into Inkscape and you use the CMYK tab, you'll notice that the uh, values, they dance around the place as you select a new color. That's because CMYK to RGB is not a, com it's not a clean conversion. So there's all sorts of weird shit that goes on. So, um, you know, hiding the CMYK tab for RGB users is also uh, a design choice. Um, but personally, I think that users need to be informed, not restricted, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to, um, you know, understand what's going on. Um, so th this is all to say that there's, there's just been a whole bunch of design work going on, a whole bunch of tr trying and looking at stories and workflows and trying to put this together. I'm very keen on hearing your feedback. 
Um, so please get in the comments and let me know if we're on the right track here. Um, and that's about it for this week. I know I usually go into Inkscape stuff, but we're already at 10 minutes. And uh, I, what I'll do is I'll talk about uh, all the stuff that's going on in Inkscape next week. So thank you all for watching. Um, please keep your comments coming in. Uh, I definitely need feedback at these uh, uncertain times. And um, yes, thank you for your continu continued support.